All right, this is problem number two from the 2014 AP Physics B exam. This is primarily a fluid physics problem. We've got a cube of mass M with the side length L, completely submerged in a tank of water attached to the bottom of the by a string. The tension of the string is 0.25 times the weight of the cube, and we know the density of the water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. We're basically doing a free body diagram down here. Uh, in this example, we have the weight is down. I'm going to go ahead and just label that as mg. I could have gone, I could have easily labeled it fg. I've got a buoyant force that is up. And then we've got a tension in the string, uh, which is also down. It's pulling the object down. It's stopping it from shooting upward. Okay, so for part A, you're going to get, this is going to be worth two points. And you basically need to get all the points if you have everything drawn correctly. And uh, you're going to lose, you likely will lose points if you have extra arrows or extra forces in there. Part B, we want all the density of the cube. Now, a lot of students, when they try to do this, recognize that there's a few ways of finding density. We know that the density of any object is the mass of that object divided by its volume. You also know that the buoyant force acting on an object is equal to the density of the fluid it's in times its volume times g. And then there's a few other kind of in-betweeners that include density in it. Now, a lot of kids try to use this green equation in the beginning. Uh, unfortunately, we do want a concrete value of density, not just in terms of the variables given. And they didn't give us our mass directly, nor do we know its volume directly. We know it's got a length L, so in the past I've seen kids write M over L cubed, which if it's said in terms of the variables given, would be acceptable. Unfortunately, we're actually looking for a real, a real life number here. So we're going to use the buoyancy way. Uh, however, we don't know buoyancy directly either. We can't just say, oh, buoyancy is equal to this and the other. So really what we're going to do is we're going to apply a dynamics setup. We're going to use Newton's third or Newton's second law here to solve for this. We're going to recognize in this situation the net force acting on the object is indeed zero, which comes from that upward force of the buoyant force minus that tension and minus that weight. And if I kind of expand these out into their equations and rearrange it for the buoyant force, I'm going to see I have the rho Vg uh, is equal to, well remember the tension is 0.25 of the weight and the weight is going to be written as mg so this will be equal to 0 0.25 mg for the tension plus mg for the weight itself which ends up being 1.25 mg I'm going to rewrite that so it's all in one line Now there's a few things here to pay attention to. We know that the acceleration due to gravity can cancel out. We also see here that we have the density of the fluid, not the density of the object. We have the volume of the fluid displaced, which in this example is also equal to the volume of the object because it's 100% submerged. We have the mass of the object. Well, if you remember that earlier equation, remember, density is mass divided by volume. What I want to do is move this volume over here and then move that 1.25 over there to show that the mass of the object over its volume is the density of the fluid it's in divided by 1.25. Since mass over volume is the density, really all we got to do is take that density of the fluid it's in, water, 1,000, kilograms per cubic meter divided by 1.25 this ends up being 800 kilograms per cubic meter 
Right. I also just want to caution you to double check that it's less than a thousand. The density of the object needs to be less than the density of the fluid or else that string wouldn't have been needed at all. It would have been sinking. Part B was worth three points. All right, now for part C, we're going to cut the string and we're basically going to let the object accelerate upward. We want to know what is this acceleration immediately after we cut the string. Now, we're still going to go ahead and utilize Newton's second law. However, this time the net force is not zero. The net force is something, so I'm going to write MA. And in this example, we only have the buoyant force, and we only have, or up, and we only have gravity down. There is no tension anymore. Remember that buoyant force is rho VG, so we have MA is rho VG minus MG. And ultimately, we're looking for A. In order to find A, we're going to need to know the mass of the object. Or, we can recognize that this rho VG bit can get replaced with density times mass. Because density is mass over volume. Density times mass is 1 over volume. Sorry, so density is mass over volume. So volume is mass over density. Ignore that part here. Now this is the density of the object. We're going to take this whole thing, we're going to repla re replace it with my volume down here, and that will allow me to get rid of my m's and have some real math here. So I have m a is rho of the fluid times the mass of the object divided by the density of the object times g minus mg. Since m is common in all three terms, I can get rid of those. And I see here that the acceleration is equal to the density of the fluid, 1,000, times gravity, 10, divided by the density of the object, 800, minus 10. Let me go ahead and calculate this. And we get an acceleration here of 2.5 meters per second squared. And that's positive, which makes sense. It's accelerating upward. Um, part C here was worth three points. Finally, for D, we want to indicate whether the magnitude of the buoyant force in the cube increases, decreases, or remains the same while it's rising. If you pay attention to B, and we do need to justify, so this is going to be part of your justification, the answer is it remains the same. And the reason being is the buoyant force is equal to rho Vg. The density of the fluid doesn't change while it's rising. The volume of the object doesn't change while it's rising. The acceleration of gravity doesn't change. So no variable in which buoyancy is dependent on will change. As a result, buoyancy stays the same. And this one was worth two points. Now I do want to have a note here uh, for the new AP Physics 1 and 2 format. Your questions, um, from what I understand, will not be 10 point questions. I believe you'll have five questions of equal value. So a buoyancy problem will likely look a little different. Probably add an additional part or two to make it match the same criteria of a 15-point problem. All right.